Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily leak code problem. So today the problem was called construct binary tree from in order in post order uh, traversal. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the theme of the week has been all tree problems. This one was the hardest one so far, and I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow, which is Friday, will be the toughest one. So what we're given here is the in order and post order traversal of a particular binary tree that we want to create. So we're not actually given any binary tree, just a list of the order of the values of each node that you would expect if you did that particular traversal. And so just to review what in order, post order, and pre order is, pre order isn't part of this question, but it's kind of one of the three traversals that you can do uh, using depth first search. So pre order is just uh, current node, then the left node, then the right node, then in order is just left, current, then right, and then post order is just the left, right, and then current. And so the way I kind of remember these is just, okay, pre-order, the uh, current node is kind of the prefix to the other ones, it, it occurs before them. In order, okay, the current node uh, occurs in between them and then post order okay the current node will be the post fix of the left and right all right so that's kind of just a quick review that's usually something that you'd learn in first year uh, your first year algorithms class and some fundamental uh, oh I didn't mean to I'm already showing you the answer but I'll quickly hide that so yeah let, let me uh, get to it so first we're going to do the recursive solution for this, then we're going to look at how we can optimize it. It'll be another recursive solution, but it will go from an n squared algorithm to an O of n algorithm. And we're just going to be able to accomplish that by having a, a lookup table. And this is actually, if you go to the solutions here, it's kind of the most popular, a better Python solution is who I got this from. So yeah, he kind of reviewed what the existing very popular solution was which was the n squared one and he found a way to optimize it and it's really simple and for my own practice i want to try to explain it to you so let's go ahead and do this so what we're going to do is for the initial recursive solution we're actually just going to recurse on this particular function we don't even need a helper one and so what we're going to say is okay how do we even accomplish this right like given these two arrays how do we produce a tree? So we're gonna make use of this tree node class, which will actually be used to make the nodes of the tree. And so what we can understand is, okay, how would we begin, right? And so say if we wanted to get three, where would we get that? Well, that's grabbed from post order because we know since it goes left, then right, then current, the root node is actually gonna appear last. And so the root node is going to be the last node in the post order array right here. Okay. And so you can actually just pop off at each iteration, the root node of that particular subtree that you're looking at. And so then what you can do is with that, you can then say, okay, now that I know that if I look at the in order, since in order is described as left, current then right, we know that everything on the left side of that root node is on the left subtree of it. It's a descendant to the left. And then everything on the right side of that index will all be values that are in the right subtree. Okay, and so you actually do that recursively to continue to construct your binary tree. So the next thing that we would do is, okay, like, how do we find the next node in the subtree? Because, well, we have three values. And so with that, since we're now looking at this, we actually just step over from our post order array to the left. We just kind of increment or decrement actually our pointer down this post order array. And we see, well, okay, so, the 20 is now going to be our next root, and anything on the left of our 20 is going to be in the left subtree, and anything on the right will be in the right subtree. And 15 goes on the left, and 7 on the right. 
But say if there was more nodes, you just kind of continue this recursive relationship. So if that doesn't quite make sense, I honestly find looking at the code itself really helps you better visualize it, but it also might take you kind of whiteboarding it yourself and taking yourself through those steps. So yeah, let's get started. So what we'll do is we know that we're gonna want to return some particular node, okay? And that's because, well, in order to construct this tree and inevitably return our tree node, you know, we have to be returning some node at the end of it, probably the, the, the head or the root of our tree at the end. And so we're gonna be returning a node. And to build that node, we'll have to say, okay, our node will be equal to some node constructed by our tree node. All right, and how do we get this value? How do we get the value that we're injecting to this tree node? Because, well, to initialize it, you can simply pass in the value of the tree node. And these are automatically declared as none by default for your left and right children. And so to grab that, what we're gonna say is, okay, this node that we're looking at is going to be popped off of our post order array. And so initially it'll pop off three. So we can just, and popping just grabs the last element. It's kind of like pushing and popping from a stack. So we can just do post order dot pop. And so that will pop it off the stack. And now what we want to do is, okay, what about, how do we grab the index? So how do we know, say in this case, when we get three, that we can say, okay, three is here and everything to the left is on the left subtree and everything to the right is on the right subtree. Well, what we can do is we can just say node index is then equal to our in order dot index. And this is just an array uh, method that returns the index of the position where this value is located in that array. And so we know that, well, if we pass in three here, it'll return one since three is located at the first index or the index of one in that particular array. And so that's how we get the index. And so from there, if we wanna then continue to recursively build our subtree on the left and right, we just say, okay, our node.left is going to be equal to this recursive call to our method that we're creating and it's required us to pass in the in order and post order arrays. And so we just pass those in initially. We'll just leave them the same. And so we know that whenever we're popping from our post order array, it actually is modifying it. So this is being modified in place whenever we pop it. And so we know that this is getting updated correctly. Now to update our in order array, we want to do this because we want to recursively only look at say when we're doing our left, the in order array, we only want to look at nine now. And say if we're at 20, then at this recursive call, we only want to look at 15. Okay, and so to do that, we're just going to, the Python way to do it is like slicing. You're just going to kind of partition your array to only include those values within that range. And so we want to say, okay, we just want to look at the node index, and if we're looking at the left, then we wanna say, all right, um, we wanna look at everything up to our node index. And because in Python this is exclusive, we won't be including the current node that we're at. And so to do this on the right side, we do the exact same thing. Post or is already getting updated in place by that pop uh, method but we want to handle the right. So then we say, okay, we wanna take our node index plus one because we wanna skip it. It's actually inclusive on the left side. So we don't wanna include the current index of the node that we just visited, but we wanna include everything on the right of it. And that's what this colon does here. All right, and so that's what inevitably is allowing us to recursively build our left and right subtrees, but we need a base case here. And so, what that is, is we just say, okay, if there's no in order or there's no post order, if those are both empty, or if either of them are empty, then we just wanna return none. And this is just used to handle, okay, 
as we're slicing our array, eventually we're going to hit the bottom where we're hitting our leaf nodes in the left and right. And we just want to be able to return none in those case. And that allows us to aggregate upwards. All right, so let's give this a run. Oh, there's just an error. Let's take a peek. Build tree is not defined. Ah, we need, in Python, you have to use self because we're referring to recursively to this current method. Let's try running again. 20 is not in the list. Okay. Dot index of no dot val. So we're popping off, creating that, we're giving it the value of that particular node. We want to grab the index. Of that node's value. Oh, I see. Yeah, so the way that we're doing this, because of just the relationship between like in order and building from left and right, and since post order goes left, then right, then current, as we're reading backwards, we want to be building our right subtree first, since we're going to be touching upon these values first okay so otherwise you're just going to be getting that error that we just saw so you really have to just respect the order in which uh post order arrives you want to be kind of building it right then left okay so it's kind of a depth first search to the right and then to the left let's try submitting that and we got it so let's go ahead and hey if you want to stop here this great solution it's n squared because there's some performance trade-offs that you're giving by doing this. So because this index call is O of n, since you're going to have to search through the entire post or, or in order array, so you're going to have to iterate through the entire array so that you can find like four if that's what you're searching for, and then return that index. Okay, so that's O of n. And then as we're building this tree, since you have to go down the height of the tree, that would be n squared. Since with every call, you're going to loop back here and then call O of n. So it's n squared. However, we can actually overcome this by using a hash map. And you're going to have the same uh, space because, well, that application stack that you're cursing on takes up space. And this hash map is going to be like the same size. So what we're going to have is a root lookup, or maybe a better word for it is post order lookup. And it's going to be a hash map. And what we're going to do is we're going to provide the value as the key and the index as the value. And so that's because what we want to be able to do is find the index for a particular value in O of one time. And so say we have nine in this case, then we're going to have kind of the relationship of nine colon zero, and then three colon one, and then 15 colon two. And so using a hash map, we can kind of get an O1 lookup time in order to grab the corresponding index for that particular value. All right, and so otherwise you'd have to search through the entire array like we were doing, which is O of n. And so it's V colon I for every index and the corresponding value. I also spell the entire word. And then we just enumerate that array. Okay, and so just to show you that, I'll print it out. Right, and so that's what it looks like here. That kind of hash map lookup for that post or, or in order array. Okay, and so from there, what we're gonna do is, I'll just expand this, is we're gonna say, okay, what we need is a function, just call this build tree, and we're gonna return this function call at the very end and it's going to construct our tree. It builds our tree just like we did recursively with the build tree method. 
And so from here, what we're going to have is left and then right. And so these are actually not going to be the arrays that we're inserting, but instead they're going to be the pointers, kind of the indices that we're looking at. And so although before we were kind of slicing the arrays so that we're only looking at them, instead it's much simpler just to have the integer pointers of saying, okay, we're looking at this range within this particular array. And so we do zero, and then we look at either length, since they're going to be the same length for post order or in order. Then we do minus one, since naturally the bounds are kind of added by one, and we want to look at between zero and the very end of that array, which is subtracted by one. All right, and so like we did when we made our recursive solution, we had to check whether either of them were none or like null, if the post order array and the in order array were empty. And that's how we determined if we had a leaf node. The way the typical trend, and this is kind of templated, whenever you're dealing with a recursive problem, you're kind of using the pointers for it. You can just simply check, okay, if left is greater than right, which would never really happen, right? Uh, is greater than right, then we'll return none. And this is how we know when we've reached kind of out of bounds here right there, okay? And so it might make a little more sense when we kind of show how we're going to recurse on this method. But for now, I think that makes a little bit of sense. It's just kind of a templated way of handling these bounds kind of overstepping when you subtract and add to them. All right, and so now what we can do is we want to use our post order, or sorry, this is our in order lookup. I hope that didn't confuse you too much. And we'll say, okay, the root or the node index is equal to our in order lookup of that particular value that we want to look up. And so we know that's going to be the node value. And so we'll do node.val. And so let's go ahead and create that. So our node is going to be the tree node. And the way we get the most recent value, I believe, is just by popping off our post order again. And so that's just kind of recursively, we're going to be shrinking that post order array and just grabbing the top value as that will always be our root uh, three in this case. And then now we can actually get a O1 lookup for that particular, oh, there we go, for that particular index. Okay, and so now what we do is we just want to recurse while building this tree. So our node.left and our node.right is equal to something, and eventually we just return that node. Okay, so let's build our tree. So we call ourselves again. We don't need self since this is actually a function now. We want to pass in the new bounds that we're looking at. And so what that's going to be is our left will be, let me think, is just going to be itself. We're not going to modify it. And then will be the node index. And what do we want that to be? I believe we want a minus one there. And so that's how we kind of shrink as we're looking for it. And we don't want to be including this current node that we're looking at. But we want to keep, you know, in this case, zero. Say when we find three here, we want to include zero, so it's still looking from zero on for this subtree, but then we want a minus one, so it's really zero to zero, so it's only looking at this node for that particular subtree. And so that minus one is what excludes that particular three. And then from there, what we're going to do is say, we want to build the tree for our right subtree, and we want to say node index plus one, since that is the pointer to the particular root node that we're looking at. So three will be one, and so it would be like, okay, we want to look from index two onwards all the way to our right, which would be the length of the array. 
So we'd be looking at this subtree, right? Awesome. Let's go ahead and we'll put right here. Okay, so I think that's good. Let's go ahead and run that. Oh, can't pop from an empty list. Post order dot pop. Val an I I val in order. And so then we pop from post order. Get that particular node. Ah, once again, <laughs> uh, that little trick, I think, where we have to go right then left. Yeah, so I think this part is a little bit confusing. Um, once again, so we're wanting to do the depth first search on the right then the left since post order is left, right, then current. So you want to be looking that way, right? And so that's just because we're going to be popping off from our post order. And that's how we say, okay, we want to look at this node and then the one to the right and so forth. And we're just kind of navigating to our left side afterwards. All right, so yes, that's the iterative or the recursive solution, both the N squared. And then this is the O of N solution since we were able to, oh, I don't mean to be using all these tools right now. Um, and so we went from like O of N lookup for that index to an O of one solution. So yeah, I hope it helped. And I think this was a great question for me to practice. I've honestly pushed this one off before. I, I saw it, was too scared to try it. So I hope it went great for you. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Thanks.